There are days that time just seems to drag on and on, and I look at my watch and it just seems to go so slow. Well, today we're going to learn a sense in which, in special relativity, time does slow down. Hello folks and welcome back. I'm Brian Roberts. The slowing of time in special relativity is called time dilation. To understand it, we'll build it up in two steps. First, we'll show that time dilation happens for a special kind of clock called a light clock. We'll then see why time slows down not just for light clocks, but for everything. Suppose we think of a clock as a device that produces ticking every second. But instead of a second hand ticking, we're going to use a light beam bouncing back and forth. This is what's known as a light clock. We begin with an extremely long ruler. How long? Let's make it 186,000 miles long. And on each end of the ruler, at the bottom and at the top, we'll place a mirror. Now a bulb flashes on one side of the ruler, and a light beam travels from one side to the other. How long does it take to get there? It takes exactly one second. You remember the light postulate, don't you? Light beams travel at 186,000 miles per second in every reference frame. We've set this clock up so that a light beam is bouncing back and forth between the two mirrors, so that a bounce or a reflection off the mirror happens once a second. That is, it ticks like a clock, once per second. And you might think, this is off to a weird start. We're building 186,000 mile clocks. Is that what I need to understand relativity theory? Fair enough, this is an idealization. However, it's not that weird. We actually do bounce light beams off the moon, which is not 186,000 miles away, but rather 239,000 miles away. Wow, the moon is so far away. It looks like a piece of cheese. Can't believe humans have actually been there. What we're now going to do is a thought experiment. Not an actual experiment, but an experiment that happens in our mind. Philosophers have thought a lot about thought experiments. Is that a meta thought experiment? And it might seem a little strange that somehow, by closing my eyes and thinking, I can actually learn facts about the outside world. But this is a very common practice in science, and Einstein was really good at it. So here's a thought experiment with a light clock. Suppose I observe a light clock that's not at rest, but which is moving perpendicular to the motion of the light beam. How much time will it take for the light beam to get from one mirror to the other? Well, first I'm going to need a way to measure time, so I need a clock. How about another light clock? I've got my own light clock with a light beam bouncing back and forth between the two mirrors, and now I consider this light clock moving perpendicular to the direction of its light beam's motion. Here's the thing. That moving light beam has a lot farther to travel. It's not just moving up and down on the light clock anymore. It's on a diagonal path because of the perpendicular motion of the light clock itself. Okay, so the light beam on my light clock has one distance to travel, and the light beam on this moving light clock has a different distance, so what? Here's the other thing. Because of the light postulate, the speed of light on that moving light clock is the same as the speed of light on my light clock. They're both 186,000 miles per second. So here I've got two things traveling the same speeds, and one has a longer distance to travel. It must take a longer time. So according to the measurements of my light clock, that moving light clock ticks slower. How much slower? You can do the calculation. It's just Euclidean geometry. But I'll tell you the answer. Suppose the light clock is moving really fast, say 99.5% the speed of light. Then it'll take 10 seconds for that light beam to go from one mirror to the other. 10 seconds according to my light clock. What would normally take place in one second now takes place in 10 seconds on the moving light clock. Before we get too concerned, let's back up a moment. We're talking about a very strange clock. Brian, why should I care about your 186,000 mile long clock? Well, it turns out it's not just light clocks, but all clocks that slow down in motion. And the reason has to do with the other principle of special relativity, the principle of relativity. Here's another little thought experiment. Suppose I have a spaceship and I place an ordinary clock and a light clock where the light clock is oriented perpendicular to the motion of the spaceship. The spaceship starts at rest, and I notice that the two clocks are in sync. My ordinary clock ticks once per second, and my light clock ticks once per second. Now I set the whole apparatus in motion at 99.5% the speed of light. I already know that the light clock will slow down to tick once every 10 seconds. What will happen to the regular clock? Suppose the ordinary clock didn't slow down. Then the driver of the spaceship could look at the two clocks and say, the ordinary clock is ticking once per second, the light clock's moving slower, it must be the case that I'm in motion. When I was at rest on Earth, these two clocks seemed to tick in sync. Now that I'm in motion, they seem to tick out of sync. So the laws of physics seem to be different in one reference frame than the other. But that's not possible. If the principle of relativity is true, the regular clock must slow down too. And not just that clock, every clock you could possibly imagine. You could have a pendulum clock, a sand timer, a digital clock. All these clocks must slow down according to the principle of relativity when the spaceship is set in motion. But wait, 
What about my biological clock? Everyone carries with them a clock of blood pulsing through their arteries. Your cells are a clock bringing in food and putting out waste. My whole body seems to be one big clock ticking away the hours of my life. And according to the principle of relativity, those clocks must slow down too. My pulse, my metabolism, my brain patterns, the very hours of my life must slow down with the light clock when the spaceship is set in motion. That's unbelievable. It's one of the most shocking results of modern physics that time slows down when a body is set in motion. It's called time dilation, and you've now learned that it's a consequence of just the light postulate and the principle of relativity. The story doesn't end with these thought experiments. There are actual experiments which confirm that time dilation and length contraction occur. One of those experiments has to do with a mysterious phenomenon called a cosmic ray. The cosmic ray is basically radiation from the cosmos. For example, the Crab Nebula seems to produce them from time to time. If you find one of the most well-known constellations in the sky, Orion's Belt, and follow the belt to the right, you'll get to Taurus, a V-shaped constellation. And up the left side of the V, just a little bit, is a cloudy spot. And with a big telescope, you can see that that spot is actually a nebula. What's a nebula? Well, almost a thousand years ago, in 1054, Chinese scientists noticed an extremely bright star in exactly that spot, which lasted for a few days and then disappeared. That star was experiencing a supernova. It left this beautiful gaseous cloud in its place, which apparently has the shape of a crab, I guess. To me, it looks a little more like magical coral, or the inside of a lung. And at the center of that cloud is a neutron star, the dense remnants of the original exploded star spinning fast and sometimes producing these great bursts of radiation. The particles traveled for thousands and thousands of years until they arrived at a tiny blue orb, the Earth and smash into the atmosphere. When those cosmic rays smash into the atmosphere, they produce showers of particles called muons. And because the cosmic rays were traveling at near the speed of light, those muons come showering down to us at near the speed of light. We detect these muons all the time. In fact, there's detectors all over the world. You can even set one up at home. But the thing about muons is that they have a very short lifetime. Muons only exist for about two microseconds before they disappear in a quantum burst. And yet to make it from the atmosphere all the way to the ground where our detectors are, those muons would need at least 50 microseconds, even traveling at close to the speed of light. How is it possible for a thing that only lives two microseconds to travel a distance that requires 50 microseconds? The answer is time dilation. A muon at rest in my laboratory may well only live two microseconds, but when it's traveling at close to the speed of light, its time slows down. And at 90% the speed of light, its lifetime goes from two microseconds to 200 microseconds. Now it has plenty of time to make it to our detectors. Problem solved. This phenomenon only makes sense if time slows down as is predicted by relativity theory. That is, we have experimental evidence for time dilation.